Sharif Mobley is a U.S. citizen languishing in a Yemeni prison. He was kidnapped by Yemeni counterterrorism forces in 2010 and accused of trying to meet with U.S.-born radical cleric Anwar al awlaki During his abduction, shots were fired. Sharif was hit in the leg. He was taken to a hospital where he was later interviewed by U.S. Embassy officials. He requested his family be notified, but that message never got home. After he left hospital, he was handed over to Yemeni prison officials. The terrorism charges were dropped, but he was not released from captivity. Sharif was fearing he would never see the light of day again, so he made the difficult choice to try and escape. It was during that attempt he shot and killed a guard, a decision that may have sealed his fate to remain imprisoned for the rest of his life. We're joined now by the legal director of Reprieve, Sharif's last hope of freedom, Corey Kreider. Corey, I want to thank you very much for joining us, and I, I guess the first thing we have to ask is there are those indicating why he was there. What was the actual reason why he was in that country? Sharif was in Yemen with his wife and his children studying Arabic and studying his religion. But the reason he got picked up isn't because Sharif was in Yemen. In fact, Sharif got picked up uh, by Yemenis at the behest of the United States because he was trying to go home with his family. So he goes to the U.S. Embassy in January of 2010 talking to U.S. Embassy officials saying, listen, my wife and, and my two children, I've just had a baby, would really like to go home to our family in the United States. I need new pages in my passport and my baby needs a travel document. Can you help us? Unfortunately, the people at the U.S. Embassy in Yemen at the time thought that he fit a kind of racial profile of someone that they wanted to talk to. So instead of processing the family's papers so the American family could go home to America together, they delayed the papers. He came back again and again. He couldn't get his baby's documents. And instead, what the U.S. seems to have done is ask the Yemenis to send a team of masked men to kidnap him outside his house, shoot him in the leg, and detain him in a hospital in secret for several weeks. Now we fast forward five years later and poor Sharif is secretly detained again in the basement of a military base, as far as we can make out, where the Saudis are bombing it with U.S. intelligence support. So it really is incredibly distressing what's happened to Mr. Mobley here. But is there any evidence whatsoever that he was going to meet with the radical cleric? Because it would seem that might be a linchpin of the case. It isn't a linchpin of the case. In fact, there is no terrorism charge against Mr. Mobley, and there never has been. And if you go and look at what the U.S. intelligence sent to the private security company Stratfor in an email in 2010, they specifically say Sharif Mobley was not part of al-Qaeda. They say that. They say they picked him up because they hoped to question him about whether he knew a guy who knew a guy. But that's not a criminal offense, is it? Um, you know, Aliki was a pretty famous cleric that uh, millions of American Muslims listened to in the 1990s. He changed. It's absolutely right. He did change over the years. But the, the true fact is, even the FBI, you can see in the own emails that they then sent to Stratfor, know full well that he wasn't part of al-Qaeda. That's just not the charge. Why then has this case slipped through the cracks? And can you even confirm that he's still alive? We've been trying to get proof of life. We, you know, we, the problem is the place where Sharif Mobley is secretly detained now um, is incredibly dangerous. The United States has given intelligence to the Saudis, and the Saudis have carried out bombing raids across Yemen, and they have hit this facility twice, one time apparently killing over 80 people. Uh, and we can't get the State Department or the consular officials to do anything about Sharif. Sharif has been disappeared for over a year now. He was disappeared on the eve of a hearing in his criminal trial in Yemen when we were about to put in evidence about the American role in the kidnapping. We got all kinds of documents through the Freedom of Information Act in the United States that showed, just as Sharif Mobley told us, the United States really was involved in the original decision to kidnap and detain him, that he was interrogated in secret and so forth. So we had a very clear defense that we're about to put on in a trial, and every man deserves a fair trial, but I'm afraid in Yemen you just don't get it. So he's been disappeared for over a year. Yemen has collapsed, uh, and as I say, with intelligence support from America, the Saudis are bombing the very place where he's secretly detained. So my real concern is that my client's going to be killed before he can even have a trial. I only got about 90 seconds left then, so it, this just sounds like a tremendous amount of 
wrong choices, bad choices, the U.S. Embassy being involved, the government making mistakes. So where do you go from here? Not even knowing if he's alive. Is it possible for the U.S. government, whether it's the President or Secretary of State John Kerry, to actually do anything? Because as you noted, there really isn't anybody to talk to right now in Yemen. The truth is that the United States does have a channel open to the Houthis, the people who have seized power in Yemen. We know that because they negotiated the release of an American journalist, Casey Combs, quite recently. So at the very least, they could tell the Saudis not to bomb the place where my client is held in secret. But more generally, they need to be opening talks with the Houthis, who, let's face it, are the people in power now, about the need to make sure this guy is evacuated as Casey Combs wasn't home to his wife and his kids in the States. Would it be fair to say that your client, others you've mentioned, that there are others we still don't know about who are there potentially being held and potentially dead at this point because we simply don't have contact? Yeah, the Yemen is one of the most underreported conflicts in the world right now. And there, it seems to me from public sources I've read that there are potentially several Americans unaccounted for. And I don't really know what the State Department is doing for those folks. Sharif Mobley at least had the benefit of talking to a lawyer before he kind of disappeared. But there's a real question about whether the United States is doing everything that it can for these citizens at a time when it's supporting the Saudis to bomb this country. It's a, it's a real scandal. There's a lot more that they could do. And it would seem as if you need to get a hold of your client and we need to find out what Americans are there, who made the mistakes, and at least try to get these people out because you are right. We've seen the pictures from Yemen. This is a frightening place to be right now. Corey Kreider, I want to thank you very much for bringing us up to speed on this. We will stay in touch and hopefully your client comes out alive. Thanks so much. Thank you.